Okay, everybody, if you saw in our video a couple, about two weeks ago, I changed pads on my wife's car. Well, I should have went ahead and changed the rotors while I was in there. They look good and they felt fine, but they're warped. So we were starting to get the thud as you drive and hit the brakes. So we've already done the driver's side here, as you can see. But we have this brand new power stop plane rotor. I didn't get cross drilled slotted, I didn't need any of that. So we're gonna show you today the steps to changing just your rotors. The first thing we did was we actually took the rotor, it had oil on it, a little bit of brake cleaner, and then some paper towels, wiped off, got it clean. So now we're gonna go over to the car. All right guys, as you can see, we got the car up in the air on jack stands, we got the wheel off. Now, if you are just changing rotors, not pads, you can take this whole assembly loose as opposed to where we took this loose to change pads. It will have two 19 millimeter bolts. They'll be in the back back here. As you can see, they go right there and there's one on the bottom as well. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, if these have never been loose, they're gonna be super tight. So we soaked them in PB Blaster and then we went to a huge breaker bar. It's the, we went to this size breaker bar to break them loose because we, it took both of us to get them broke loose. So just be cautious that those will be ungodly tight in there. Okay, so we got our caliper off, rotor's ready to come off. As you can see, it's stuck. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a pry bar and a mallet, knock it from the back. What happens is this gets corrosion between the face of this and the face of the bearing, and it just it gets stuck. You can spray PB Blast or whatever in there, but a good old mallet or a pry bar is your best bet. Oh, as you can see, all that stuff's coming out of there. Knock it loose, pull it off. And she's loose. Now we're ready to put our rotor back on. We got the old rotor off. New rotor installs as simple as slide it on. And then what I do, see, if you see it doesn't want to sit flush, so what I will do is take a lug nut, put it on the bottom. Now something you need to pay attention to on rotors not all rotors will be like this. I've worked on cars where they have set screws that hold them on. So some of your rotors may have an actual screw here or here that holds them on. So double check that first before you go beating on it and it doesn't come off and it turns out it's a set screw. And the reason I put a lug nut on here is to make it sit flush. If not, it would want to sit out like this. So now what we can do is take the caliper and just, it should just slide back over the rotor. You may have to compress the pads a little bit, but where these pads are almost new, this is a brand new caliper and rotor. It will slide over. Okay, now Steve will put the bolts back in back here. started okay we got the bottom started we can go ahead and start ratcheting it and I will try and get the top started that's hard to do because you can't really see what you got going on here all right so we got everything assembled on these back bolts one thing you will make sure top and bottom is they are as tight as you can get them because this is an important part so me and Steve actually took two hands, him pulling down, me pushing down, and got him. So now they're tight. So now we will stick the wheel on, tighten it down, drive it around, come back and retorque the wheels. We got both wheels back on, we tightened down after it was back on the ground. I'm gonna drive around the block real quick, make sure everything's okay, come back, torque it down, and then Throw the hubcaps on and we'll be done. Easy 30 minute job. Uh, like I said, I probably should have done this whenever I had the pads off, the way everything was new. But I thought the pads were good, or the rotors were good. They were, but I guess the new pads and everything else just made them, they were warped. So anyway, lesson learned.